In the 60s, it was the shower scene in Psycho. In the 70s, it was the water in Jaws. In the 80s, it was the dip from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. In the 90s, it was the remove your wig scene from the witches. However, all of these scenes pale in comparison to a scene from 2003's cult classic film, Final Destination 2. A scene to this very day still gives me the heebie-jeebies. I'm not going to show the entire scene, but I'm going to talk about how the scene was not only executed extremely well, but made me feel. Let's talk about it. Now, before I discuss the scene and how it made me feel, um, let me give a brief recap on Final Destination as a whole. Final Destination was directed by James Wan and tells the tale of a group of high school students who are on a trip to Paris. One of the students, Alex Browning, played by Devin Sawa, experiences a premonition moments before boarding the flight. Alex experiences several small mishaps. He already has a fear of flying already, um, but these small mishaps kind of slowly but gradually culminate in just pure destruction of the plane. He watches his friends one by one as they're ripped from the plane, you know, as they burn in the plane. And finally, upon the final scene of his premonition is him, Alex himself, basically being engulfed in flames gruesomely. A la like T2 in Judgment Day. As soon as Alex has that permission, he wakes very violently and he starts freaking the hell out. He screams, he yells people not to get on the plane. And a small group of his classmates and some of his friends uh, try to calm him down, try to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, several of his other friends, the remaining of his other classmates and friends, board the exact plane that he didn't want anyone to go on. But Alex inadvertently saves those who remain behind as those who remain watch as that plane that was heading to Paris descends in a ball of flame. I don't want to spoil the rest of the film. You should check it out. But even to this day, I still do not fly, like flying all that much. It hasn't affected me as vividly as it did back in the day, but I still have a, a small fear of flying. You know, I have, I have these silent rituals that I do before I take off on every flight. I, I listen to the exact same song on my phone. I I do a quiet prayer to all those on the plane to make sure that they're getting to where they need to get to safely, that the, the pilot is, you know, awake and is able to guide this plane to where it needs to go safely. Um, I check out the window, uh, make sure that the glass is intact. I make sure that the wings, when they do the, that process, to make sure that the wings uh, protract and retract appropriately. Um, everything I, I do is things that are make, make me feel better. but. Because of this one scene um, in Final Destination, it just, it, it's impacted me even to this day. Like I'm getting anxious even talking about it. But let me talk about Final Destination 2 and the scene. In Final Destination 2, we start off with a group of new death cheaters. As Kimberly Corman, the main character, played by A.J. Cook, has a deadly pileup premonition on the roadway. Everything about this scene is built up extremely well. That was the greatness of the early Final Destination movies. You had to get the audience's attention quickly, and they did masterfully. I personally hate traffic. I don't know about you, but I personally hate traffic. And I have driven through most of the horribly congested cities in the nation. However, one thing I hate more than traffic are dump trucks and large semi hauling timber and elongated projectiles. If I'm behind one, I quickly move to the next lane and try to speed up past it. This one scene has affected my driving habits in such a way that I don't even think I'll ever forget it. The one scene where the woman tries to slam on the brakes and there's a half drunk water bottle wedged between the brake pedal and the floor. I, I can't tell you how many times I drink water while driving and I just, after I finish a bottle, I just throw it in the back seat. But even to this day, every time I make a stop, I make sure that I empty out all my empty water bottles, even if they're not entirely empty. I, I throw them in trash. Um, there have been times where I've forgotten 
But because of the scene, I am so worried that I'll drop a water bottle where I'm driving um, and I'll get caught under the brake pedal. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> even the one scene where, you know, the cop is driving and the log, you know, breaks off of the chain and slams into the front windshield 3D style. Even to this day, I think of like, why couldn't the cop just kind of swerve out the way or duck? But if you're a driver, if you've been driving for a long time, you know that, you know, reaction time variables to it, depending on how fast you're going, you have to make those quick decisions. Um, and even in the best conditions, even when you've done, done everything right, some things just start out to you. Some things just happen. And, you know, by luck, you either avoid them or, you know, you, you slam into them as a safety measure you want to give yourself enough time um enough grace enough distance so that you can make the best decision possible while driving so final thoughts some of the greatest scariest spookiest creepiest scenes are the ones that stick with you in your mind long after the credits roll i remember to this day the first time i walked out of the theater the most vivid memory in the entire film was the opening scene and there's other scenes in the film that are more gruesome but this scene just woof, it, it sticks with you i remember after the movie i left the theater i drove home and this scene was just dancing around in my mind i got into the car i made sure i had my seatbelt on like i always do and i drove incredibly slow um and this is also not safe too you, you don't want to drive incredibly slow you just want to maintain the speed limit and all that but i was just so freaked out that i was checking out everything and the worst thing about it was it was nighttime so <laughs> You know, and I was probably maybe 20 minutes, 20, yeah, 20 minutes from my home. So it was a, I was in that right lane driving really, really slow. But that was a great thing about the movie. It made some of the ordinary things that you don't even think about. Maybe you're in a rush, you get in your car, you're not even thinking about some of these things, but it made those things kind of just stand out to you. You know, what if, what if you were on the road? What if this happened? And those are some of the like the best scariest movies where you can actually imagine some of these things happening to you. It's not good imagining them, but it, it, it ratchets it up that level of fear from the mundane. And those are usually the best type of creepy, scariest, spookiest moments where you can imagine this thing actually happening. In honor of October and the upcoming holiday Halloween, I want to share what scenes in movies, cartoons, music videos, and video games I find scary, spooky, and creepy. Next week, I'll talk about three music videos that give me the scariest, spookiest, and creepiest vibes. If you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell to get notifications. And maybe we, in the comments, we can talk about what are your scariest, spookiest, and creepiest scenes um, in movies, cartoons, and music videos. You know, I'll, I'll love to talk about it. That's all I got. This has been Cavs. I'm out.